Good evening and welcome to part two of this live webinar and the theme is Care for Creation. It's a Franciscan spirituality of the earth with excerpts taken from this beautiful book by Ilya Delio, the Order of St. Francis and Keith Douglas Warner, Order of Franciscan Minors and Pamela Wood. It is a beautiful book. It's thought-provoking and it's heart-sensing. And it resonates with my own pilgrim journey as an interfaith Franciscan. Although I am a Catholic Christian and was a nursing monk in the church for many years. But in the last 12 years, I guess I began a different journey listening to the words of Jesus to my heart and in 2008 challenged to take a leap of faith by the words of St. Francis at his tomb in Assisi to embrace all faiths for they are all children of the one true loving God albeit known by many names and the community, the Teo community of St. Francis is unique in that at the moment it's an online community. It's a community that embraces all faiths and none. But I want to read to you about our integrate, integrated spiritual ecology for soul seekers everywhere and it resonates with this book, Care for Creation. Francis of Assisi, <clears throat> in his living of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the full, gives us an example of four ecologies. The first is an environmental ecology, living in harmony with creation and mother nature and all the elements. And secondly, it's a social ecology embracing all peoples as brothers and sisters regardless of their color, race or gender orientation. And thirdly, it's a spiritual ecology in praise of the Father Mother God as creator of all things. And fourthly, it's an interfaith ecology inviting all soul seekers of truth enter a new concept of living practical spirituality in the modern world regardless of one's religious persuasion. And the Teo community of St. Francis is a monastic interfaith spiritual community of brothers and sisters who seek to express and share this integrated spiritual vision of an ecology for the sake of and out of love for God's world by providing the following. A vehicle whereby mankind can embrace religious diversity without compromising one's spiritual values as they search for lasting peace and reconciliation of all fates to unite as one spiritual family, sharing God's love for all and to all in the cathedral of life, the landscape. It's a unique concept of sharing God's love through a common sense approach of putting practical religious spirituality into positive action for all who are seeking peace where mutual respect is essential for the integration of all faiths and beliefs. It's an online spiritual community, a monastery without walls, based on the core values of Franciscan spirituality, where the Creator God is love, and by inviting all to come and share that love as brothers and sisters, embracing a spiritual way of life from the comforts of their own home. It's an online network providing spiritual support for those 
in need of spiritual guidance and daily prayer. And finally, it's an online network providing spiritual information for those who are guided by God to advance their spiritual life further. In addition to the above, St. Francis of Assisi with Jesus the Cosmic Christ presented a clear mandate to our founder in April 2008 at the tomb of St. Francis of Assisi and it was to establish an eco-sustainable foundation called the Franklara Abbey of Peace and Compassion. And our brothers and sisters who join dedicate their lives to God in reparation of man's inhumanity to mankind by offering their hearts for global unity and peace. And interestingly, the Teo community of St. Francis will not only embrace all faiths, but will welcome men and women from different beliefs to come and share that vision together when the fullness of time, or in the fullness of time, when the Father Mother God reveals the place to the community. So we have an integrated spiritual ecology for soul seekers everywhere within the Teo community of St. Francis. And our spirituality as Franciscans who embrace all beliefs is very much rooted in our care and love of the earth and the animal kingdom. And I guess that's why St. Francis has the edge because Franciscan spirituality is unique. It's unlike any other spirituality. Most others don't really spell out this care and respect of the earth and the animal kingdom. They might talk about it or reference it in their own manuals, but with Francis, he lived it. He lived, he breathed the very essence of Franciscan spirituality. So, <clears throat> coming to this little book, our section this evening is on the ecology and creation. Life is amazing. All life is utterly dependent upon our planet for everything that it needs. And God provides everything through creation. Water falls from the sky and runs to the creeks and rivers. Plants and animals grow and are all part of the circle of life. Earth circulates around the globe, refreshing and renewing all of life's creatures. The sun, the trees, the plants, oil, coal and gas provide energy the beauty of creation grabs our attention, inspiring us and providing for all our needs. God truly cares for us, like a mother cares for her children, and expresses this care through the goodness of creation. Our planetary home is not ours alone. However, for we live in community with an abundance of creatures upon which we depend daily, even though we rarely think about them. And this chapter in the book, interestingly, introduces the basic principles of the life sciences, ecology and biology to lay the groundwork for a contemporary Franciscan care for creation. It begins by explaining some of the special traits of our home planet and make it a suitable place for us and for the incarnation to dwell. It then traces the role that the science of ecology can play 
in helping us to understand creation. What is creation? <coughs> Excuse me. In our solar system, only Earth provides the conditions necessary for human life. Our home planet is just close enough to the sun to allow its energy to heat our planet, but far away enough that it does not burn us. If its orbit were farther from the sun, we would live on a planet covered with snow and ice. But if it orbited closer, Earth would be too hot and survival would not be possible. All life depends on energy, and most life on Earth, as we know it, depends on the sun as the ultimate source of this energy. Solar energy reaching Earth's surface is captured by plants and converted to sugars, which in turn become the basic building blocks for life. These compounds serve as food for the other creatures. Life is only possible with food and energy, and these have their ultimate origins in the sun. We live on a blue planet, rich in water, although it is but a simple two element chemical compound. <coughs> Excuse me. And water is absolutely essential for life. Over 70% of our bodies, our human bodies, are composed of water. And over 70% of our planet is covered with oceans. Healthy human bodies can live for many days without food but can survive less than three days without water. According to biologists, oceans, ocean waters offer just the right conditions for the evolution of life. Ocean water with the simple molecules dissolved in it provided most of the raw material for the first bacteria, the cellular building blocks from which more complex life form evolved. So what has all this got to do with you, creation and God? Well, everything that's been given to us has been given as a gift, a free gift. God has created us in love. You could say we are a love child of God. And when God created this sacred earth, he asks us to care for it, to nurture it. The indigenous peoples had a great respect for the earth. The Celts, the Native American, Indians, and then in Australia, the Aboriginals, we who call ourselves modern man really are quite ignorant today. We abuse this free gift by taking from her, by raping her resources, by destroying her very lungs, the rainforests, because we're motivated by a different ecology or a different spiritual belief. And it's one of self greed. I don't care. So what can we learn from the indigenous peoples? They didn't worship God alone. They came to God through God's creation, as I do. I don't necessarily run into a church building to praise God. Our God is as present here in the monastery garden as in the greatest cathedrals of the world. Now, some of you might find that blasphemous, and that would be a shame because 
everything that lives, moves, and has its being is of God, is from God. It has God's imprint within its own DNA. The blades of grass growing on your lawn. The trees in the woodlands, the brooks, the streams, the birds singing the praises of God, the wildlife, the bumblebee, the honeybee, even the domestic fly, everything has a purpose, everything. And yet, mankind seems to have lost his way in this technological age. Recently, whilst we were having dinner, we were curious about Brother Daniel's new computer watch. He lifts up his arm and he goes, Siri, what is the temperature in London? Without looking at the computer. And immediately this voice told him. And then he would say, Siri, what is the population of the United Kingdom? And all these answers would come. And that surely is advancement, talking to a watch and it providing you with information. I mean, I was dumbstruck, to be honest, at this technology. So I would start asking silly questions like, how many deers are there in the nearby woods? And fair enough, there was an answer to that. But why is it that we desecrate this sacred earth knowing that it is a free gift from God. Let us just reflect for a moment. Let us come into our heart and ask our heart, why was I created? What is my life purpose? Why am I here? What is God asking of me at this hour? What can I do as one individual considering the mass destruction, considering terrorism, war, children of God starving through lack of water and food and where others live in persecution where the young girls and women are being raped and tortured. What can I do as an individual to try and help with the eco-balance? Because there's an eco-imbalance. When you think of all the flights that leave Heathrow Airport in a day, there are thousands of flights leaving. I think there's something like 16,000 flights departing from one airport. And if that's the case, what about all the pollution in the air, in the stratosphere? And what about the local people who live next or near to that airport? What's happened to the free gift of air that's now polluted? Even when you walk along the streets of the cities and you're breathing in all that CO2, carbon monoxide, and other chemical emissions that's found in diesel. We're actually slowly killing ourselves to be truthful because we're abusing the very gifts that we've been given. So care for creation should be a part of your agenda if you call yourself a devout Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, Baha'i. Caring for your environment should be a part of your spiritual journey. Don't you think? Or are you leaving it just to Franciscans? The Spirit of God touches certain individuals as 
the Spirit of God touched these three ama amazing authors who wrote this book, Care for Creation. And they challenge us scientifically, from an ecological point of view, from a spiritual point of view, they challenge us to revisit our thinking. And am I contributing to the downward spiral? Or am I making a difference by enhancing that eco-balance? When you think of someone who's deeply negative, or when you think of neighbours, they call them neighbours from hell, where they're always shouting and bawling, and there's always conflict. All that negative energy goes out into the atmosphere. And it does have a negative impact. The electric pylons, they say that if you had um, a fluorescent tube, one of those light tubes, and you walked under it, it would light up because the energy is so strong. But what can you and I do? Well, one thing we can do that won't cost us a penny or a dollar or a dime or a euro is to sit somewhere sacred, a woodland, a forest, your garden, your backyard, and just quietly be still and focus on your in-breath and your out-breath. And give yourself permission to feel the energy of Mother Earth around your feet. Preferably not on concrete or tarmac. Always best on earth, grass or soil. So shall we do a little meditation where we can connect with Mother Earth and try and recapture some of the essence of the indigenous peoples of the world, the Native American Indians, the Hupi, the Aboriginals, and the early Celts. Let's begin. Just be comfortable now and find that place where you feel relaxed and safe. And if you have a mobile phone, a good thing to do will be to disconnect it and remove it from your person because of the, the microwaves. Just remove it from your person, place it somewhere safe. And just visualize your feet, your two feet on the sacred earth. And now begin to take nice, deep, non-labored in-breaths and relax. And be aware of a gentle pulse being emitted from the earth, the sacred earth, and that gentle current of love comes from the heart of Mother Earth and it's coming right up your feet and right up to the top of your head and it's filling you with selfless love. It's touching each of your chakras, your energy wheels in your body. It's reawakening those that are dormant it's getting rid of all negative ions and replacing them with a positive energy. So as you breathe in now, breathe in that positive energy from the earth. And in your out breath, release any fear, any sadness, tiredness or weariness to Mother Earth. And take a deep breath and relax. Be still now. And in your next in breaths, allow the love of Mother Nature, Mother Earth, to touch your memory. There may be painful memories. Let her release those memories in your out breaths and release them to her. In your 
next in breaths. As you breathe in, you are breathing in unconditional love. It's bathing your heart with compassion and kindness for you. For you to learn to love yourself, to forgive yourself, and to let go of all the unresolved conflicts of your life and release them to Mother Earth. Be still. And now that Mother Earth has allowed you to sense the currents of love that are free from her, she wants you to become a vehicle, a vessel of love. She wants to work with you so that you will become a pillar of light, a pillar of hope. And wherever there is negativity, she can call on you to just sit and visualize that negativity and dispel it with love, with positive energy. Right now, we focus on where you live. Maybe in your house there is someone unwell, or maybe there's some sadness, stress, money worries, tensions, physical ailments. All of those go to contribute towards a negative imbalance. So let us now, as we breathe in, breathe in the love of Mother Earth, and let her love touch all of those painful thoughts, tensions and anxieties. Let us release them to our care. Let us let go of them and trust. And as you do so, you feel a great weight lifting. And it leaves you with that inner peace. And that inner peace is the love which will light the flame to bring in the cosmic Christ, to be able to heal you and all around you. Not by your words, but by your love. So Franciscan spirituality is about embracing love. It's about sharing that love with yourself first. For if you do not love yourself, then how can you expect Gaia, Mother Earth, to ask you to share that love with others? So all around you there is peace now. And you focus on this flame, this eternal flame of love. Wherever you are sitting, just visualize a simple flame from an ordinary candle. And that flame is getting bigger and brighter. But you notice that it's beating, the flame is moving to a heart. And the heartbeat is that of God. And the heartbeat of God is wanting to come into you and become your heartbeat. So two heartbeats in unison, that of God and that of you. And now as you focus on that flame, you see two hands holding that flame. And now you see the face of the cosmic Christ <clears throat> who's calling you to harmony and to embrace the cathedral of God, the landscape, with renewed vigor and love. 
with a sense of hope and that all your needs physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, psychological, financial will all be met as soon as you learn to surrender your heart to the I am presence of God. And the Christ shares this flame with you and he asks you to become an ambassador of peace. He asks you to take this flame and to breathe on it each and every waking moment. Love, only love. For as the great Buddha Dampada once said, hate is not overcome by hate. Hate is overcome by love. And now you sense that heartbeat of God has come into you. You sense the love of Christ flow through you. Your feet are throbbing with joy from Mother Earth. There is an eco balance all around you. And now Mother Earth asks you to breathe in that love of God and in your out breath to release love to the four corners of the earth and to see that love flow through the stratosphere touching everything and anything and reigniting the thought process within every child of God whom you may never meet, but they will be touched by your love. And they're relieving. So yes, you can do great things, but now just come round gently and graciously, take a deep breath, just slowly come round and as you open your eyes you now begin to realize that yes you can do ordinary things that will make a difference but that difference is rooted in respect for the cathedral of God the landscape that you will share your love not just with other humans but with the animal kingdom as well for they have a rightful share here the earth wasn't created just for man it was created for the animal kingdom and man so together we bring this love and we share this love with all of God's creation be still now. So let us conclude by the simple and beautiful prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. <clears throat> Lord, make me a channel of your peace, that where there is hatred I may bring love, that where there is wrong I may bring your spirit of forgiveness and love, that where there is discord, I may bring harmony. That where there is error, I may bring truth. That where there is doubt, I may bring faith. That where there is despair, I may bring hope. That where there are shadows, I may bring thy light. That where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is in giving that one receives. It is in by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. 
The animals of the earth are among God's very special creatures. <clears throat> they help us to work, they carry us, they guard our homes at night, and best of all, they bring us joy and laughter. And that is Franciscan spirituality. And just as I was reading the prayer, you could hear the Canadian geese flying over to the nearby Leighton Moss. How privileged we are to have nature sing to us. So I wish you a pleasant night wherever you may be. And I thank you for giving up your time to join me. And I look forward to your company again very soon. For now, peace. May peace triumph in your life. And remember, you too can make a difference by doing the simple, ordinary things extraordinarily well. God bless you. <clears throat>